Alright guys, in the last tutorial what I did is I basically told you guys that what we can do with HTML5 is take a website and basically treat it like a desktop application where we can take images, icons, drag them over and actually plop them down in other places and make stuff happen. So I guess I might as well put my money where my mouth is in this tutorial and actually show you guys how to do it. So what I want to do first is I want to build a function like we did last time that occurs right when the window or in other words the web page is done loading. So what I'm going to do is put window add event listener and the one thing I don't like about notepad plus plus is whenever you like type something wrong it should put a little underline under it but anyways it's a cool program nonetheless so basically as soon as our window loads what I want to do is I want to call a function called do first and this function is a function that we didn't make yet and just go ahead and put false there because remember the rule just put false all the time unless I tell you differently so now what I want to do is since we call this do first function we actually have to build it so function do first and it's not going to take any parameters, it's just going to do something. And all this function is going to do, again, this is basically going to fire off as soon as our web page is done loading. So what we want to do is we want to set all of our initial variables. And by that I mean we want to reference everything. For example, um, this picture right here, I'm just going to go ahead and grab the ID, copy, and basically whenever we reference it through JavaScript, it's going to know we're talking about that picture. So let's go ahead back into JavaScript and the first thing we need to do is give it a variable name. My pick and let's just go ahead and set this equal to document and remember since this is in this file right here we're talking about this document. So document get element by ID and the ID of that was face pick just like that. So now what we want to do is on this picture right here, remember this variable my pick references this thing right here right now. So what I want to do is I actually want to add an event listener for my pick. So my pick, go ahead and copy that. Just going to go ahead and copy this. Or might as well. You see how lazy I am. And now I'm going to add some event listeners. So you say, okay, Bucky, you're probably going to add an event listener for load. You want something to happen as soon as that picture is done loading? No, no, no. What I want to do is I want to add an event listener called drag start. Now this event listener kicks off whenever you start to drag your image. So as soon as I start to drag this, that's when a function is going to be fired. So again, drag start is a special keyword that's built into JavaScript so you you like can't change this or anything. You need to use the keyword drag start. And it's basically an event that happens whenever you start to drag something. So it's saying, okay, whenever you start to drag my pick, what do you want to happen? Well, we want to call a function called start drag. Now, this function isn't built in already. This is what we're going to customize. So we're going to need to build that one later on. And, of course, the third parameter is false. Remember the rule, always put false unless I tell you otherwise. So now what we need to do is we actually need to reference something else. So we already have a reference to my pick which is this right here. Now we need a reference to this left box, this blue box right here. So in order to do that, just like before, we're just going to go ahead and I'm just going to cheat a little bit here, copy this, and instead of my pick, just go ahead and put left box, and what was the ID for the left box? Oh, that's convenient. That's why you name things what they are, so they aren't confusing at all. So now in JavaScript, we have a reference to left box through the variable left box. So now whenever we use this variable, remember we're talking about this blue box, aka I named it the left box. You can name it the blue box, but maybe we're changing the color later on. So anyways, enough of me rambling on. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding three event listeners for the left box. So let's just go ahead and copy that and hit left box, add event listener. And I actually could have copied this. Dang it. I get so mad whenever I could have done something the lazy way and actually did it the hard way. So like I said, we're going to be adding three event listeners. The first one is something called drag enter. And let me just go ahead and set the rest of my parameters now since I'm going to be doing something soon. So drag enter is basically when something enters the area. So basically when something enters here, 
that's what's going to happen whenever we use this one and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be copying this and showing you guys two other events that we're going to listen for so we want to call a function whenever something enters the area we want to call a function whenever we drag something over the area so this basically is called one time well I'm don't worry about this for now and the last one is drop and I'm just gonna do this so drag enter and drag over you're saying wow we're gonna have to write a bunch of customized functions but the only thing we're worried about is we don't care what happens when we drag over this or enter the area cuz that isn't you know what we're worried about for this tutorial maybe when you're building a program on your own you want it to highlight or something whenever you're dragging over but the only two events I care about is whenever we start dragging I want something to happen and whenever we drop it in here I want something to happen so you're saying okay then why don't you just get rid of these completely drag enter and drag over if you don't even want anything to happen well because of this and listen very carefully because this is actually kind of important by default, you know how there are a bunch of different browsers like Google Chrome, Safari, Opera, Internet Explorer? They each have a default action that occurs whenever you drag over something. Google Chrome might do nothing like it is right now. Internet Explorer might highlight this div. Opera might turn it purple or something to know that you're hovering over it. Well, what we want to do is say, okay, since we're building this website and we want to make it the same, through all user experiences we want to have the same action so we're gonna override this by making a function inside here and you put e in there because this means whenever you have e always means event so the event is basically that e variable is the information on that event so for the code that we write in here those are gonna be curly braces actually we want for the event prevent default and remember what this means is basically if you have any default action that occurs for instance making it you know highlighted or anything like that just prevent it just don't do anything instead and through this we're basically saying okay whenever we explicitly write this we overwrite it and therefore it's the same across all browsers so remember like I said, instead of calling a function that we can write later on, just go ahead and copy this code and now nothing can happen. And that just makes it compatible across all browsers. It gives the users the same experience no matter what they're using. So basically, the only thing we're doing is we want to call the start drag function whenever they start to drag the image. And whenever they drop the image into this box, we're going to be calling a function called dropped so those functions are not built into JavaScript you actually need to build them explicitly so that is what we're gonna be doing in the next tutorial so to recap one last time if you got everything then go ahead and move on to the next tutorial but I know this is kinda of confusing so I'm gonna recap it one more time what we did is we referenced this picture through a variable called my pick now with my pick we can add an event listener on it so basically our website is going to be waiting until we start to drag that and whenever we start to drag it it's going to call a function called start drag that we're going to be making in the next tutorial after that we referenced left box which is this blue box right here through JavaScript variable and then we said okay browser if you have any default thing that you do whenever they enter or drag over this area like right here don't do it just go ahead and you know prevent default and this is actually a built-in function that we got with HTML5 it pretty much means don't do anything at all so it's like okay if you highlighted it by default don't even worry about doing that at all the only thing that we need to do is whenever we drop it into that box we're gonna call a function that is called dropped and that's what we're gonna be building in the next tutorial so again in the next tutorial we're gonna work on start drag and dropped and then our application is complete. So for now, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.